Now, I, I teach soldiers uh, as a job. Um, I'm an employee of the Department of National Defense, but I have to uh, add the proviso that, of course, I'm not, when I'm criticizing the department, I'm certainly not speaking on their behalf. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm speaking out because uh, as someone who, who um, has looked back at Canadian history, Canadian military history, and actually is very proud of it. I, I think that in, in the Canadian history, we've fought in the right wars and we've avoided the wrong wars. Um, and now I'm alarmed that we are finding ourselves, perhaps for the first time in Canadian history, fighting the wrong war. We uh, did nobly in World War I and World War II, and then in the first act of collective defense, uh, collective security under an international organization, we uh, repelled aggression in Korea uh, in, in a very noble effort. Uh, we didn't fight in Vietnam, and we certainly didn't join uh, in any official way or, or strong way in the Iraq attack of 2003. But we now find ourselves in Kandahar in, in a mode uh, that, that I find very uncomfortable, that I'm very uncomfortable with. And many of my, uh, many people have said that you should not uh, be criticizing the uh, CF uh, uh, while they're in action, you shouldn't be criticizing deployments. But as I tell my uh, students who range from majors to colonels, that actually my best service that I can do to them is to actually tell them how to think critically about the operations they're engaged in. So they can be... Uh, I'm an insider who, who takes an outsider view. Um, and recently there was a minister's inquiry into my activities. The new Minister of National Defense uh, wanted to know why I was writing the Global Mail about uh, criticizing some of the uh, operations and activities of the Canadian Forces, particularly the great decline in, in contributions to UN peacekeeping. But uh, to his credit, uh, my, uh, my boss, the principal of the Royal Military College of Canada, wrote back to the minister saying we are not in the business of censoring our professors. So what I'm, uh, what I'm going to speak to you about today is, is what alarms, alarms me. Um, it's happened, um, I've been in, uh, working for uh, D&D and, and uh, RMC and the Canadian Forces College in Toronto for uh, now six years. And uh, in the last two years I've seen something quite, quite alarming. First of all, in what we're teaching, we're moving away from peacekeeping and peace support operations to a new concept called a three-block war. The first element of the three block war is combat. And uh, this is alarming because we're going away from thinking about the mandate of the mission to thinking that there's a one operation fits all, one, one concept fits all. And this is uh, borrowed from a Marine Corps Commandant, uh, Charles Krulak, who came up with it out of the Somali experience of, of the Canadian Marines saying that there are within three city blocks, uh, American soldiers might find themselves engaged in combat, in humanitarian assistance as well as traditional peacekeeping activities and he was trying to get his mind around how do they do all three at the same time. Well the concept had value as a description of where soldiers might find themselves but uh, it became, it was adopted by the Chief of Defense Staff actually, uh, he adopted it when he was Chief of the Army before he became the Canada's top soldier and he, um, he take it as a strategic concept thinking that not only what you have to be prepared for but also, uh, or more importantly, what we, sh what we should actually be doing. So all of a sudden we find combat has pr primacy among our missions. And it's creating a mixed mandate for the, the soldiers that I'm teaching who think, oh, we're going to Afghanistan to fight a three-block war, that means combat is number one. And rather than the concept that is originally envisioned, that sometimes if you're doing a peacekeeping operation or a humanitarian operation, you may have to do combat. So combat was made uh, from uh, was was moved from a, a a something you have to prepare for in case you find yourself in combat to actually a mission mandate where you're to engage in combat, and that is a is a huge difference in mentality. It's a it's a war fighting mentality from a peacekeeping mentality, and as I call it in my lecture on the three block war, I call it fatally flawed, fatally because we'll be engaged in in uh, in, in an actual literal sense of engaged in killing people and having our own killed and 16 people in Afghanistan and it only punctuates the point. On January 15th I found myself uh, being asked if I would wanted to take over the, the head of a PRT in, in Kandahar uh, from the current uh, person because he was to come back to Ottawa. His name was Glenn Berry and he was killed on the next day. Fortunately I told uh, the start people in Ottawa that the mission, I didn't believe in the mission because it was based on a faulty doctrine, three block war doctrine. 
Um, in addition to the three block war concept, uh, which is pushing aside peacekeeping, we have the new notion of failed and failing states. So um, I believe this is following a, 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 an American type of mentality that in a pejorative sense, we don't look as a community of states in which we're all trying to work together as in some uh, form of global citizenry and he's trying to prop up states and different states have different capacities and different, um, different values and cultures that are all to be valued, but rather in a kind of simplistic way to say, well, that's a failed state. So mm -hmm. you just pass them off in a, in a, in a very blatant sense of, of saying that's that's not us, and uh, this kind of uh, mentality is is only one step removed from the concept of a rogue state, and I, I only ask people what they considered how far that is removed from the axis of evil. So all of a sudden you're grouping states together. Now, that when I was doing the three block war lecture, I had to look into the language that was used by the military. And in all of our hallways, and every student in the command and staff course is given a poster. And the poster reads as follows, and it, it's um, by the commander of the army, given to all uh, students from all three environments, saying that preparing our soldiers for the three block war will be the foundation of all our training. Leaders at all levels must ensure that our soldiers are set up for the success in all aspects of the three block war. Now how do they define the three block war? Well, within the same mission, we will engage in a high-intensity fight against the armies of failing states, conduct stability operations, including counterinsurgency, and deliver humanitarian aid or assist those who are doing it. So uh, this is part of, of my concern that we've adopted an, an American concept, brought it into, into Canada in a fashion that it wasn't even meant to be, and certainly wasn't adopted by the American military as a whole, but now taking it in along with the failed and failing states and, and occasionally I'm hearing the rogue states concept. Mm -hmm. Then uh, another concept that I've been told to uh, as a director of the uh, academic director for the strate strategic studies curriculum at the Canadian Forces College to include the concept of VUCA which is uh, just is supposed to describe the world according to the, uh, the new Canadian point of view, which is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, VUCA concept. And we have to start in, in putting that into our curriculum. Rather than seeing a more humanized curriculum, we're seeing one in which we're uh, again adopting an American concept and, and being able to adopt it in our curriculum. Uh, along with that, we're dropping out our annual Peace Support Operations uh, seminar in the Advanced Military Studies course so the PSO lectures are, are being dropped in favor of these new three block war VUCA and failed and failing state concepts as well as some positive elements I, I should add for fairness the 3D plus T concept or the whole of government as the conservative, conservative uh, minister likes to call it which means working with other departments although I have to ask myself sometimes whether when I see the leaders of, of DND particularly Rick Hillier talking about 3D plus T or whole of government whether it's more uh, co-opting other governments to the um, to the DND uh, defense point of view, and uh, that's certainly been the case when we talk about Afghanistan. I'd like to tell you about how the structure of the Canadian Forces is changing. We've uh, adopted an American model. Uh, first of all, we've created a Canada Com, which is uh, parallels to North North Com. Um, it, we've adopted a Canada First Homeland Defense, although we. we to our credit, we still call it public security. But uh, the structure is very much modeled after NORTHCOM, and the liaisons are all down from CanadaCom down to NORTHCOM and, and back again. So I can see a lot of that, the U.S. thinking comes out of here. We've also uh, elevated uh, the special operations, which uh, do some of the most uh, difficult and some of the dirtiest work. The force elevated to a command, Canadian uh, Special Operations uh, Command. And actually, one of my students is, is now to take up the task of being deputy director of uh, CANSOFCOM. Um, we've taken a department, a long-standing department, which has an illustrious history in peacekeeping, called uh, DPK Paul, the Department of Peacekeeping uh, Policies. And we've reducing. Uh, we're going to be renaming that probably to something like Stability Operations, which is a new term. And my fear is that by adopting the concern, the term Stability Operations, the, the new term, which is favored by a lot of conservative academics, um, as, as well as uh, many of the, the officers, that we will be um, thinking of stability in the short term. So you go to a place, you just stabilize it, rather than you bring down the, the much deeper concept of peace. Peace is a much richer concept, which allows for, for longer term uh, contributions. 
instability operations, you can go to a place like Haiti, which we've gone under so-called stability operations, then we leave and then things blow up again and we're not doing a long-term uh, nation building, peace building uh, concept. So I, I am concerned about this uh, adoption of, of new language there that comes along with it, a whole baggage of new concepts and new approaches which uh, become part of our operations in the field. And that leads me to Afghanistan. We have become a single mission military, a single operation military in Afghanistan. When I've asked for contributions to uh, the operations in Sudan or uh, in the Congo, um, the, the, the um, response is that we are overtaxed with Afghanistan. Uh, when, when the Under Secretary General comes and speaks to the Colonel's course, as he does in, the, um, in our trip to New York, uh, in the field study exercise and says why can't Canada contribute more our old excuse was well we're in Afghanistan and that is uh, a form of peacekeeping but it's much harder to say now that we have moved into Kandahar and we've abandoned the peacekeeping model and instead what we have is a three block war model and while ISAF had many of the elements of peacekeeping uh, a preliminary sense of consent uh, a notion of impartiality and minimum use of force in Operation Enduring Freedom in which our commander, a one-star general, uh, Brigadier David uh, Fraser, reports to a two-star general um, who reports to a three-star general in Afghanistan, uh, uh, three-star three general, Major General Freakley. He or then reports back to the Pentagon in Washington. So we are now in the U.S. chain of command um, uh, under the operation, whereas our media sold us as a uh, sold it as as if we were taking over our command, but actually we're just uh, one cog in a much larger Operation Enduring Freedom Command in Afghanistan, and we are hopefully transferring to an ISAF command. But the problem is that ISAF command is now very much in the mode that not in its previous mode, but in a mode that's uh, in full partnership with Operation Enduring Freedom American Command. So what I've tried to show you is that both in in concepts with three block war. Um, in structure with the new structure of the Canadian military and in operations we have become Americanized. It's a story that hasn't reached the Canadian military, it hasn't shown the alarm that, that it deserves and that this process has, been go has, has gone on largely unheard but you add the pieces together and you get a very alarming picture. I don't think we can, we can sustain uh, a Afghanistan mission as they get to know more and more about the nature of that mission and of course the civil society which is really the aware parts of the Canadian public uh, standing up and, and, and having a voice against uh, this uh, process of the American uh, militarization of the <coughs> Canadian forces. So for this opportunity to interface with you to tell you the story and I'll, I'll, I'll raise that alarm I'm grateful to Erica who's about to relieve me of my <laughs>